Any breach of discipline shall be reported to the steering, co steering committee. We shall bring such uh, uh, violations to the attention of the assembly committee. EMF delegates shall not do the following. No one is allowed to bring weapons at the premises of the, the provincial people's assembly. No one is permitted to bring or drink alcohol at the premises of the people, of provincial people's assembly. All alcohol will be confiscated and not returned to the owner. No one is permitted to enter assembly premises under the influence of or smelling alcohol and or other intoxicating substances. No one has permission to resort to violent acts of any kind in the premises of the assembly. No one shall within the premises of the assembly act in a manner that expresses others, that exposes others to harm or death. No one shall within the premises of the assembly act in a manner that provokes tension. No one shall act in a manner that undermines the possession of the assembly. No one shall within the premises of assembly take off clothes to demonstrate anger, happiness, or any kind whatsoever, or bring banners, posters, or placards in support or against the candidate. No one shall within the premises of the assembly behave in a rowdy and aggressive manner. No one shall within the premises of the assembly be permitted to convene a party to celebrate anything resolved at the assembly. No one within the premises of the assembly shall behave in an abusive and disrespectful manner towards other delegates. No cars shall bear or display any posters or materials in support or against any fighter. No t-shirts or poster displaying support for or against any fighter will be allowed in the provincial people's assembly. No one without assembly accreditation tag will be allowed in the premises of the provincial people's assembly. No delegates shall be allowed to speak to the media without any issue in the assembly, without their authorization by the assembly committee. No cell phones shall be on during the proceedings of the assembly planning sessions and commissions. No delegates will be allowed to sleep during the proceedings of the assembly planning commission. <laughs> Rules of lobbying. All political and organizational preparations for the EFN Provincial People, People's Assembly are regulated by the constitution of the EFF, as well as the guidelines adopted by the relevant constitutional structures. The process seeks to ensure that all relevant structures, particularly the branches, are able to engage extensively in shaping the policy discussions and political outcomes of any assembly in accordance with the mass and democratic character of our The following should constitute wrongful lobbying practices and unacceptable ways of influencing the election process. Singing of songs about the preferred candidates is strictly prohibited. Writing boards, t-shirts, and any form of indication with names of candidates is strictly prohibited. Making and waving signs about candidates supported or not supported by delegates is strictly prohibited. Raising and using funds and other resources to campaign for elections. Distributing money to EFF members and structures as part of campaigning for election. Production of t-shirts, posters, and other paraphernalia to promote a particular list of candidates. Promising positions or other incentives or threatening to withhold such as a means of gaining support. Using the media to promote a particular list of candidates and to spread malicious rumors, falsehoods, or allegations against those whom you disagree. Leaking confidential information to the media, secret interaction with journalists with the intention to get them to write stories on internal organizational issues or communicating inter internal decisions or processes to the media without due authorization. Negative campaigning, which relates to attacks on any integrity of other fighters, both within the structures of the movement and the other forums. Suppressing honest and legitimate debates about the caliber candidates in formal meetings of the movement. Manipulating membership figures or engaging in fraudulent membership recruitment practices. Allowing structures or individuals to condone, to condone violation of constitutional provisions 
and or regulations and or failing to report such violations when they occur. When using the offices, resources and staff of the EFF or any state institutions uh, or company as a machinery to promote a particular list of candidates. Using violence, intimidation and threats to coerce those who hold a different view. Setting up structures outside of the organization to promote or lobby for a particular candidate. Convening meetings to discuss leadership issues under the false pretense that they are organized by constitutional structures. Production and distribution of documents and pamphlets not approved by the structures of the organization will not be allowed. In line with these rules, all members with, without exception must abide by the constitution of the EFF, the rules and regulations, the revolutionary code of, con code of discipline and adopted or amended from time to time, as well as all policies and decisions properly adopted or made in terms of the constitution. Accordingly, all EFF structures and members should ensure that these guidelines, rules and procedures are adhered to and enforced in the run up, run up to and at the provincial people's assemblies. In particular, any lobbying that violates the EFF constitution and brings the good name, image and integrity of the EFF in dispute will be subject to a disciplinary inquiry in line with the constitution and code of conduct. Lobbying shall stop once the processes of electing new provincial command team has concluded at the Provincial People's Assembly. Once the new Provincial Command Team is elected, it becomes the duty of all EFF members to unite and rally behind the newly elected leadership, regardless of the preference we had before the elections. Amanda. number <laughs> six which are messages of support. Sizotela Kuze EFF Student Command Chairperson of the province. Amanda. E wati mvuli yeza Honge na tutu E wababiza vongo tutu E wabakeli nganawe E wati mvuli yeza Honge na tutu Pe tutu ngena 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 Petu tunge nange nange na Petu tunge nange nange na Honge na tutu Petu tunge nange nange na Petu tunge nange nange na Petu tunge nange nange na Honge na tutu Sete makesta tel chovas vule lo toto Oka nenge, oka nenge, oka nenge, oka nenge Se oka nenge senze loko Sete makesta tel chovas vule lo toto Oka nenge, oka nenge, oka nenge, oka nenge Segoganinges and Viva EFS students go on, viva! Viva! Viva EFF in the Eastern Cape, viva! Aikule EFF in the Eastern Cape, Aikule! Yeah, thank you very much, uh, comrades. 
uh, fighters and commissars uh, standing before you, comrades, it's fighter Mvelo Abenda, a member of the EFF and the EFF Student Command in good standing and the current provincial chairperson of the EFF Student Command in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. On behalf of the EFF Student Command in the Eastern Cape, uh, let me welcome uh, the opportunity and appreciate this platform that has been granted uh, by the EFF and the leadership upon us as the EFF Student Command to come and witness the organizational character and the redesign to consolidate the ground towards the socialist power. Comrades, we are here as the EFF Student Command having a significant change towards our relations as students and the EFF. We are coming from our fourth national conference, which adopted that we cannot be members of the EFF Student Command without being first registered to vote with the IEC portal and also being a member of the EFF, then you become a member of the EFF Student Command. When we were in the national conference, we saw that as students, we are robbing the EFF comrades. Because the organization, as I was singing, it, it has assisted us a lot. It has inspired confidence to us as students a lot. Majority of black people, the youth, are able to enter the tertiary level of education through the EFF Student Command that, that was born by the EFF. So we must be grateful of that, comrades, because there's no other organization that stands to represent black people, black people particularly the youth. So, in this conference, comrades, uh, I would love to challenge members of the EFF that are also students to take this conference serious, comrades, and not see this conference as a vacation to East London, but to participate in terms of bringing ideas engaging and making sure that the politics of the EFF in the Eastern Cape will start to inspire confidence to the majority of young people that have been failed by the ANC. So what we must do as the EFF Student Command or the delegates that are coming from the EFF Student Command in this conference, we must be able, comrades, to Firstly, voice out the social ills that are affecting black people in the Eastern Cape. And also, not just voice them out, bring proper solutions or a POA that will be able to assist in terms of ensuring that the revolution that is carried by the EFF reaches the minds of young people in the Eastern Cape. Because the reality is that, comrades, the EFF is not performing in Eastern Cape in terms of erasing as a keeper, the ANC, the Koyo, Apepondwin, Gengayoba, us as young people. We have been failed by the ANC to an extent that we lost confidence in voting. So us who are here and the branches of the EFF student command through the Votamton Cha campaign, we must go and reach out the youth comrades and share the ideas that made us to follow and love the EFF. That is simple, comrades. Uh, we have adopted this campaign and we have pushed it for quite some time. We can clearly confirm now that our branches are growing in terms of membership that is having members that are registered with the IEC portal and members that are members of the EFF 
Hence, you are here as delegates. So we must take that comrade and intensify it so that it can reach every black people who qualifies to be the youth in the Eastern Cape. It is not a secret, comrade, that also in that conference, we adopted a help desk, a high school desk of the EFF Student Command. The Eastern Cape has been one of the provinces that has been doing extremely bad, comrade, when it comes to the passing rate of grade 12. We are the last. And one of the reasons, comrades, or few of those reasons are that there are no infrastructures which are called schools in Eastern Cape or high schools. And also, the education system in the Eastern Cape has been rendered useless by the current government of the ANC. Even the comrades who graduate on a tertiary level, we see them sitting next to spaza shops asking for donations of one runs because there are no jobs in the Eastern Cape. So we must participate in this conference so that we can bring a POA that will reach the youth of the Eastern Cape and change the Eastern Cape to be a progressive pro province that will make the youth that has moved out of the Eastern Cape to go and work in Gauteng or in Western Cape to come back and say Babuele Kaya because indeed the EFF has built a home for them. Amanda! How are you Thank you very much, Kusa. Amanda! Amanda! Sponge Kakulu, Ku Provincial Chairperson, with Student Command. Umvelo abend. Now fighters, we are going to move to a keynote address here to Ezo be itilivwa u deputy president we to Esim Tanda Rakulu Kizotela no kukutini sugume nimuti vangengo mayase Eastern Cape so that as wutitina la Eastern Cape is ngabanta banjan. Amanda, 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 Viva the EFF, Viva, Forward to Socialist Economic Freedom, Forward, Forward to Socialism, Forward, Amanda, Viva the Commander in Chief, Viva, Viva the Commander in Chief, Viva. Away with the ANC, away. Away with the ANC, away. Forward to victory in 2024, forward. Forward to victory in 2024, forward. Saitata, Eastern Cape, Saitata. Saitata, Eastern Cape, Saitata. Thank you very much, Commissar Togozo Tlonyane, the convener of deployees here in the province of the Free State and a chairperson in the Eastern Cape. <laughs> I'm making a mistake because we've got a provincial people's assembly as well in the Free State uh, starting today. And you might be surprised as to the program says that the chairperson of this session will be the deputy chairperson of the province. 
So the deputy pres uh, chairperson of the province has gone a wall on us. We called him several times to say that this agenda has been issued out long time ago and that he must come and preside here. So we actually even got delayed by more than 30 minutes waiting for the deputy chairperson of the province and he was nowhere to be found. Let's hope that the reasons that made him not to come on time are valid reasons and we will accept them, all of us. Want to acknowledge the CCT deployees that have been deployed here in the province of the Eastern Cape and also members of the outgoing provincial command team. But most importantly, the delegates to this third provincial people's assembly in the province. So we are gathered here convened by the constitution of the EFF. So the constitution of the EFF is a document, is the perspective, it is the law that convened all of us here because in section 18 of the constitution of the EFF, it says that after every four years, provinces as demarcated by the demarcation board and as approved by the CCT must convene a provincial people's assembly through the approval of the central command team. So the central command team of the EFF, which is the highest decision-making body, has approved the convening of this third provincial people's assembly in the province of the Eastern Cape. And its tasks include that we must receive reports from the outgoing leadership. We must get a political report from the provincial chairperson and secretary, an organizational report from the a provincial secretary. And ideally, we must receive a treasurer's report. But the most important component of this PPA is the deliberations that we're going to have in plenary and in commissions that must result in, in resolutions that are going to inform all activities and work of the organization between 2022 and 2026 when we go to another Provincial People's Assembly. So these few days are days which all of us must be disciplined, must be focused, must be dedicated, must always give the best of our ideas, must give all we know can contribute much more meaningfully to the organization. Because what is going to be the outcome of this meeting, the Provincial People's Assembly of the Eastern Cape, is going to inform the activities and programs of the EFF here in the province for the next four years. And then another unimportant but crucial component of this assembly will be election of leadership, whose rules in terms of how we're going to handle the lobbying processes have already been outlined by Commissar Mbali Damini, who spoke here of the guidelines and rules that were adopted by the Central Command Team. The reason why those rules were not called for adoption by the PPA is because the highest decision-making board, the CCT, has already said that these are the rules, guidelines, and procedures that must guide all the Provincial People's Assembly in the length and breadth of South Africa. So all of us, essentially, we must go to commissions and contribute. You can't be a delegate of a branch. You can't be a delegate from the RCT. You can't be an outgoing PCT. Who, when this PPA ends, you have not said anything. The reason why we're going to break into small commissions is to give all of us an opportunity to make contributions 
on what is to be done moving forward. What should be the agenda of the EFF here in the Eastern Cape? We do not want any of you, when you go back to your branches, to your regions, when you are asked what happened in East London, in Absa Stadium, what were you going to do there? And your report will be, we ate, we ate, and we ate. We sang, we sang, and we sang. We even learned new songs. Your report must be, we have, as what ate and noble, shared our experiences of how to build a sustainable and strong branches of the EFF. You must be saying that as what 22 in Nusa Hill, which has got the highest membership in OR Tambo, this is what we have contributed to the PPA. This is how we got to shape the resolutions of the third PPA in the province of the Eastern Cape. But I think let us take this opportunity to perhaps officially commend that this soon-to-be-dissolved and outgoing provincial command team has reached the four-year term and ended the term because the previous two PCTs did not conclude their terms. So we had here in the Eastern Cape a problem which we characterized in the first National People's Assembly, the problem of staff riders and staff riding, that here is a movement which is destined for a certain direction. And there were people who just staff rode, staff rode the organization. And when they were, the positions that they occupied were taken from them, they abandoned the organization, they left the organization. And that is how you begin to realize that these were staff riders who joined the organization because they wanted to benefit as individuals. They did not want to benefit the people. The other feature you want to know of staff riders is people who are lazy. People who, when they are assigned responsibilities, they do not fulfill them. And you will always see that when they mistakenly occupy a position and that position is taken away from them, they will start speaking bad about the organization, writing nonsense about the organization in social media and saying all sorts of things. So, so we, we had, had that, that misfortune here, here in the Eastern Cape in the first two terms. So let us commend that the PCT that is going to give reports here, they have concluded their term in terms of the work of the organization. But we can't be celebrating now the levels and work and extent and length and breadth of the impact the EFF has in the Eastern Cape. We have an obligation at all times as revolutionaries, as guided by Amilcar Cabral, to claim no easy victories and to tell no lies. So Amilcar Cabral says that one of the most outstanding features of a revolutionary is that you must claim no easy victories and you must tell no lies. The chairperson of the student command is correct that in as much as we might think that we are there as the EFF here in the Eastern Cape, we are still very far from being an ideal organization, which the organizational redesign document, which all of you have, says must be an ideal EFF at a branch level, at a sub-regional level, at a regional level, at a provincial level. And the simple demonstration of that is the election's outcome. That although the EFF in the Eastern Cape has grown consistently, 
its growth has been around 2 to 3% election after election. And that is not satisfactory. The highest percentage of votes we have ever received here in the Eastern Cape is still less than 8%. We still have sub-regions where we get 2%, 1%. We still have sub-regions and municipalities, Nubaya, Temba, and Kokama, where the EFF does not have public representatives. And that is what this PPA must pause to reflect on, of what do we do differently to grow the organization much more meaningfully here in the Eastern Cape. Because we might think that we have got six members of the provincial legislature and 123 councillors. We grew 45 councillors between 2016 and 2021, but that is not an impact. Let's put it differently. The fact that we are still not even at 8% of the vote of the Eastern Cape, means that 92% of adults who are registered to vote here in the Eastern Cape have not yet been convinced by the EFF. Have not yet been convinced by ourselves here. We have not yet reached out to all the people to all the 3.2 million registered voters in the Eastern Cape. We have not yet reached out to the 1.3 million adults who are not registered to vote to persuade them that as part of our revolutionary struggles we will need as many people as possible to be behind the economic freedom fighters, and that can be scientifically demonstrated through voting for the EFF. Perhaps there is direction towards uh, establishing a footprint in the corners of the Eastern Cape because in 2016 we were not present in eight municipalities. And presently, out of the 39 municipalities of the Eastern Cape, the EFF has got public representatives in 37. That is a step in the right direction. But we must continue to build the organization and be felt in all the areas, in all the townships, the villages of the Eastern Cape. In Jotab, in Walter Sisulu, there must be presence of the EFF in Alwal North, in Jamestown, in Dukatol. In Seinu, there must be presence of the EFF. There is no government. If you check the state that Berkeley East is in, in Lady Grey, there must be proper presence and representation of the EFF in those areas. We need to have an EFF that is campaigning in Elundin as well. Because we have got a company there, PG Bison, which owns 80,000 hectares of land and effectively controls what the municipality in Elundin does. Have we ever had a program as the EFF in Jotab to PG Bison, which is essentially the owner of the entire Elundin municipality in McClear, in Mount Fletcher, as to what should be the demands of the EFF from one of the biggest corporations operating in that area. It's one of the things that we must be dealing with in terms of what should happen. There is no reason in Krisani why the EFF does not have stronger presence in a one of the most corrupt municipalities in Inokum Giji. We marched before 
the local government elections, against corruption, against con construction of a stadium which was never there. Millions of rands were spent. But the EFF is not growing satisfactorily in Inokum Gijim. There is still no explanation as to why the EFF failed again to gain even one council in Enguba Etemba, in Credo. Because there is nothing that distinguishes Enguba Etemba and all the other municipalities of Sakisi, Zuentikae, Tuenovo, Emalatlin, in Krisan. It's the same. It's the same people. Why is the EFF not gaining traction? Why are we not having presence in Enguba Etemba? When there are so many wrong things that are happening in that uh, particular area. Why is sometimes the small progress that the student command makes in Fort Hare University not translating to the strength of the EFF in Raymond Mklaba municipality in Amatol? You see, comrades, if you check closely, KwaZulu Natal EFF got upward of 350,000 votes. And that momentum was demonstrated when you saw that in UniZulu, in DUT, and MUT, there was a very vibrant EFF students' command. And that translated as well in terms of what we got to achieve in KwaZulu-Natal. Now, the EFF student command in KwaZulu-Natal has won all campuses of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, which historically has been a base of Mavarara, generally in terms of how they get to dominate them. Why are the student struggles in Fort Hare and all the campuses not translating to the victories of the EFF. There has to be a genuine, like the leadership that is going to be elected here must be particularly concerned about the decline and stagnation of the EFF in Amashati sub-region, Stataram, Lungisi Township. First, Amashati did not have a single delegate to the National People's Assembly. Not, not even a single branch in good standing. Now, in 2021, Amashati decreased the number of votes that the EFF received in Amashati. There is something wrong that is happening there. So whoever is going to be elected into leadership must know that we have got a problem in the sub-region of Amasati. We used to have problems in Great Kai. That can be changed. We have stagnated in Mbashe. The performance of the EFF in Ward 3 in Nguma is a demonstration that because between 2021 in 2022, the EFF grew from 16% to 25% in a very short space of time. And, and that was just a demonstration that if, if you, you put, put work, work, there can be response to the messages of the EFF, even an Amatolo, which has got a lot of difficulties. So the work of the organization must continue to be done properly then. We need to have proper work of the organization in OR Tambo. Historically, we had problems in Mkontro. There must be improvement. In Nyande, in KSD, in PSJ, in Pots and Johns, highest levels of poverty, there is no one who is doing anything? Highest levels of corruption of the ANC there because no one is 
checking just what are they doing in those municipalities. But perhaps one of the things which the incoming provincial command team must look into is to what becomes a dedicated focus of the EFF at the provincial levels to OR Tambo region. Because OR Tambo region is three times bigger than this region here of BCM. It's three times bigger than Jotabi region, which has got 45 wards. And OR Tambo has got 146 wards. And majority of those wards have got eight, six, seven villages. And we still have the same number of RCT members, as is the case in Jotab. Perhaps part of this organizational redesign discussion should look into that as too. Do we use a one-size-fit-all in terms of sizes of RCTs and the impact that they can have in each and every region? Part of that idea was teased out in the Second National People's Assembly, but did not become a resolution because we said that let us work with what we have until we have perfected it and then when time progresses, we must look into suiting the organization that is tailor-made for certain purposes. There they, they has to be... They, 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 so, so our Tambo region has got the highest number of voters in the Eastern Cape, more than Nelson Mandela, more than BCM. If we can have structures of the EFF in all those villages, in all those areas there, we will be able to reach out to all the people and the EFF will realize the long overdue growth that it requires. There are improvements of the EFF in Alfred and Zoo, particularly in Matatiel. I don't understand how would the EFF decline in Winima Digizela Mandela. Because if you were to track properly at the formative stages, year one, year two of the EFF here in the Eastern Cape, we gained some shape first in Bizana area in Winima Digizela Mandela. And when these other sub-regions are picking up, you know, Mzumvumbu in Tabankul, Winima Dikizela Mandela is going down. This explanation that we have been given as to why is the EFF weakening in Winima Dikizela Mandela does not make sense. There has to be dedicated focus as to just what do we do in all the sub-regions of Alfred and Zoo district and region of the EFF so that we can have an organization that appeals to the interest of the people. Alfred and Zoo together with OR Tambo, Amatolo, perhaps the entirety of the trans guy are, are part of the poorest of the poorest areas in South Africa. Why is it that an organization, an economic emancipation movement that says what the voice of the poor is failing to appeal to the interest and the voter consciousness of the people of the trans guy? We need to have an organization that is alive and is impactful, is appealing to the interest of all the people in the areas that are beyond the river Kai. I think one of the key foundations which the incoming PCT will have is the fact that out of the seven sub-regions of Sarabartman region, we currently are represented in six of them as the EFF. We've got councillors in six out of the seven sub-regions 
of Sarah Bartman, an area which has been very difficult for the EFF. And understandably, we are not gaining traction in Kokama because they, it's fewer words, it's fewer people. The patronage system there of a family that controls everything in the municipality, where the mayor employs his children, his wives, and everyone else uses transport of the municipality for personal purposes. So almost everyone in Kokam is dependent on that patronage system that is being dispatched there. We need to pay particular attention to Kokama so that we can catch up with all the other sub-regions that are, that are coming well in Sarabartman region. Lambe is the best performing sub-region in the whole of the Eastern Cape in terms of the elections outcome of 2021. In terms of the improvements, the improvements have, have been, been very, very impressive, impressive for the areas, areas of, of uh, Port, Port Alfred. Alfred. We, we have, have to put, put maximal, maximal energy, energy in, in all the, the sub-regions sub of Sarah Bartman region. Koha, Dr. Dr. Bess Noder, Makana. Makana must be the home of the EFF. Sunday is The exploitation, exploitation that, that happens because of the, the farms there, there because, because of the game, game reserve there. there. The, the EFF, EFF must have a clear program of action as to what, what do we do in Sunday's River. River. In, in Blue Crane, they, they can be an EFF, EFF government. We thought, thought that if we give additional resource in, in the, the previous, previous election, there's, there's going, going to be something that comes out of Blue Crane, but we did not get anything. We just got one cancer. Out of the six words that exist there. But there must be persistent effort that we push in Blue Crane so that we have got work of the organization. Fighters, we must be concerned about Nelson Mandela Bay. Ma Nelson Mandela Bay was supposed to be the best performing region here in the Eastern Cape. But it has declined in terms of the number of votes we do not have impact there. We do not have impact even in terms of the membership recruitment of the EFF. All branches of the EFF, all regions have got set targets. It will be a miracle if Nelson Mandela reaches its target for the one million membership before the end of this year. There has to be a dedicated focus. Immediately this PPA finishes. There has to be a dedicated focus on increasing recruitment in Nelson Mandela because it has not been performing up to expectations. And there are so many challenges that are happening in Nelson Mandela. We are not a factor in Nelson Mandela. We can't even raise our hand like we are doing in Ekuruleni to say that we can be government in Nelson Mandela amidst this bickering between the ANC and the DA because we do not have a solid organization. In Ekuruleni in Gauteng, we say we raise our hand, we can be government because we have got an organization that has demonstrated without CCT assistance and micromanagement that they can grow by themselves. When organization grew, it actually carried the entire province of Houting Ekuruli. We can't say the same thing in Nelson Mandela. But if we had an organization that is solid, that is demonstrating growth in Nelson Mandela, we could have said to the ANC and DA that because you are always fighting, every second weekend there's a new mayor there. Maybe you must give that to the EFF so that we can provide decisive leadership. The fortunes of the EFF must be changed 
in Nelson Mandela and the leadership that is elected in this provincial people's assembly must pay particular attention to Nelson Mandela. BCM is not performing as it could perform. There is a huge admiration of the EFF in all the spaces here in Buffalo City. Young and old people in King William's town in Duncan Village in Mdanzan always appreciate the presence of the EFF. But we do not work maximally to win the awards. There are awards which we could have won in Mdanzan. There are awards which would have won in Duncan Village. There are awards which would have won in uh, King William's town, even where the original Chaperson comes from. But we did not win those words because we work and we stop somewhere. We come with some energy and then nothing happens. I am purposefully speaking about the provincial dynamics so that we can paint to you the challenges that we are confronted with as a province. And this is a province that is officially and statistically the poorest province in South Africa. The number of people who are living below the poverty line is the highest in the Eastern Cape as compared to any other province. The levels of unemployment are the highest at more than 50%. This is a province that still has got mad schools. Where the schools are brick and mortar, they are using pit latrine toilets where kids can easily fall into those toilets and die. This is a province where kids walk for very long distances to school. There is nothing that is done. That this is a province where health care has deteriorated. Where corruption is like the, is, is the end thing. The richest people, the most glamorous people from the Eastern Cape is politicians of the ANC. And they continue to show off wealth and spend half the year in Johannesburg because they know that there is no opposition to them here in the Eastern Cape. This PPA must change that. Because fighters, the reality is that some of us who sometimes as part of our work visit Johannesburg, there is no way you will go to Johannesburg and not meet a leader of the ANC from the Eastern Cape in Johannesburg. In restaurants, in Shebins, everywhere they are there. In birthday parties all the time. Why, they, why do they do that? Is because they know that they will come back expected of you. When you are at RCT, what is expected of you? Branch of the EFF, it paints a picture, it paints the destination of where we wish to be. So that every time we are engaged in activities of the EFF, we always reference that this is where we are going. This is how a branch of the EFF should look like. That is what it, it, it basically says. It actually like it was out of the second National People's Assembly that section 26 of the EFF constitution was introduced in defining what a branch of the EFF should be like. And it says that each and every branch of the EFF must have a VD coordinating committee of 10 fighters. So each and every VD of the EFF must have a structure of the EFF that does work at VD level. It is much more relevant here in the province of the Eastern Cape. Because if you have got a ward in Port St. John's which has got six villages. 
And then the branch chairperson, secretary, the entire BCT is unemployed fighters. It will be difficult for them to coordinate work in all the other villages which are VDs. But if you have got VD coordinating committees in each and every village, you are sure that there is work of the organization that is happening in each and every village every day. Because the limitation that we have been having as the EFF is that in these wards, the EFF becomes stronger in one VD and weaker in the remaining of the other VDs. But the EFF constitution and this organizational redesign perspective locates that the importance of VD structures here in the province of the Eastern Cape, you have got the highest number of voting districts in the entire country, 4,809. So the provincial command team that is going to be elected must be fully aware that whether it's VDCCs or VDTFs, VD elections task forces, you will be expected between now and before the end of 2023 to establish 4,809 structures, not members, structures of the organization which must be monitored that they are doing work of the organization, they've got resources, they've got constant weekly meetings, are involved in recruitment. That is what you must be aware of. Because some of you are saying you are available, you are available, you want to lead in the PCT because you think being in the PCT is an employment position. And being a PCT member does not mean that we are automatically going to employ you. It doesn't work like that. PCT position is voluntary work. So, if you get elected in the PCT and you stay in Alwal North, which is the other end of the Eastern Cape, and we deploy you to Kokam, you must go to do work of the organization in Kokam. Don't tell us stories that that place is very far. Saying you are available is an acceptance that this province is not vast. That language must automatically disappear from all of you who are going to be available for leadership responsibilities here in the province. There is huge potential. Our people here are waiting for the organization to come and speak to them. There is no any other means, there is no shortcut to persuading people to vote for the EFF other than speaking to them one-to-one. -one. And speaking them one-to-one, -one, you need proper structures in all the VDs, in all the villages. And that is the honesty through which we must deliberate as to how do we have a strong organization in the province, in all the villages, in all the sub-regions, in, in all the regions? Our voices are is not very loud, even in the metros. So part of our weakness is we say we are not claiming any victories, we are not telling any lies. Part of our weaknesses is that we have not been vocal enough on anything here in the Eastern Cape. And that has to change. The organization must be a voice that speaks about all the issues that are affecting the people in the Eastern Cape. Do you know we went to visit Kumkani in Ntsikayetu, Mantazi. And he was very shocked that there is EFF in the provincial legislature here in the province. The general, the former general who advises 
Matanzi, I said that there is EFF in the legislature. It cannot be like that. It can't be. Why is it that part of the simple things that when a leadership is elected, there are so many traditional, recognized traditional leadership here in the Eastern Cape. Before you go anywhere, just go and introduce yourselves. Go to all the areas. Go to Skau. Go to everyone. Go again to Dalinjabo and introduce yourself. Go to everywhere to say that we, because a bigger part of of this province is under traditional leadership. How come that you have not done a simple thing of saying to traditional leaders, we have got lots of concerns that we are going to be your voice as the EFF in the legislature and in parliament. It does not need rocket science to just perform a simple and straightforward task such as that. That is what we expect from all of you. The Commander-in-Chief is going to come fight us to speak to all of us when we close this PPA on Sunday. And it will reflect on all the global balance of forces and domestic balance of forces and the issues that are confronting us now. But there's an issue that we raised yesterday in Parliament about electricity in South Africa. We are speaking about this because the United Nations Conference on Climate Change is starting in Egypt this coming Sunday. And South Africa is going there to commit to those world imperialist forces that we are going to close all our coal power stations. That is not possible. We are for cleaner energy, we are for renewable energy, for green energy, we are against the pollution of the world. But South Africa currently does not have a plan to move out of fossil fuels as source of electricity. So our leaders must stop lying to the world that we are going to switch off electricity to please them. There are so many alternatives that must be explored. We said clean coal technologies. We must explore nuclear as a source of energy. We must form partnership with the Russian Federation and build nuclear power here in South Africa. We must use hydrogen meaningfully. There are power ships that can solve our energy crisis. But those people are going to tell lies there in Egypt that we're going to have a just transition. They don't have any plan in terms of what is to be done. Fighters were just making these remarks to ignite the otherwise intense discussions that are going to take place in our commissions after the presentation of reports so that we shape a clear agenda for the future. Forward to socialism, forward. Amanda! Viva EFF, viva! Thank you very much. Amanda! Amanda! Smonge kakulu ku deputy president wetu. Every time utipi umekuluma. We were born as an art with lecture hall of fundis in Tessin, Cha Atungazazio, Sponger Kulu TP, Telen Michel Sand. Sisters of Mover Man, just see every political report, staff members, staff members, please come up front. Sisters of Mover Lab with political report, so in Tesso Wednesday and Nonk and Isotola Macopi is a political report. Bazo, Zabazo, what drop a row by row? Staff members, please come up front. Ladies, staff members, please come. 
Let's go. Hurry up. Let's go, ladies. Come on. Let's go. So you will get a copy of your political report. Then I will call upon the provincial chairperson. Let's go. Distribute now. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Amanda, Amanda, long live Commander in Chief, long live, long live Commander in Chief, long live. Kula EFF Eastern Cape Kula Kula EFF Eastern Cape Kula Kula Jabulela Komizan Togozo Itatel Tuba The Bully say with Deputy President Way to The Bully say Central Command Team members who are amongst us deployed in our province. The bullies say, O Kabam, Ebed Kokele Nabo, Kanye and Kokele Nabo, the provincial secretary, the deputy secretary, and all the other colleagues. I greet you all, comrades, in the name of economic freedom. Comrades, we are gathered here this weekend in the home of the legends. The Eastern Cape is the home of revolutionary stalwarts. It is the home of the birthplace of Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. It is the home of Chris Hani. It is the home of Robert Sobukwe. It is the home of Clarence Makwetu, Joe Gabi, Bandu Biko, and many more other revolutionary activists who have committed themselves to the struggle against apartheid and the total liberation and obliteration of imperialism and colonial domination in Africa and occupied South of Africa. We are gathered here because the Economic Freedom Fighters Constitution has amended in the Second People's Assembly in Nazareth Section 8, 18, 1, which mandates us that each and every four years we must, gather and one, we must gather under one roof to reflect on the work that has been done in the past years, to outline accomplishments we have achieved, the political challenges we have faced, and to seek towards having new objectives, resolutions, for the leadership that will be elected in this assembly. As we gather here, we do not want to see chairs flying around, pens held in hands with malicious intent. We must never be like the ANC where elective assemblies are postponed on credentials and debate for a full day simply because of the desire for positions. The day that all of this will happen will be the day that the poor and the downtrodden masses of our people, the cleaners, security guards, exploited farm workers, domestic workers, will have no alternative to look to. The EFF is a disciplined movement of revolutionary activists who are committed towards economic emancipation, and we hope to ensure that this elective assembly 
as peaceful as possible. Since the 2018 East London ICC, when we had our last PPA, we meet as these delegates representing more than 500 branches. The past period has engulfed us and forced a reconfigur reconfiguration of things and how we have previously organized the world and the day-to-day -day running of business and of different stakeholders of the society. In year 2020, an invincible enemy introduced itself to the world, the global pandemic referred to by professionals as the COVID-19. To this day, at least more than 6 million people have died worldwide and at least more than 102,500 died in South Africa. And in our province specifically, we recorded 185,000 and more. People who have been infected and at least 11,673 who passed on. The COVID-19 virus has exposed the South African healthcare system and most importantly, the ailing and underdeveloped health system in our province. To put it abruptly, comrades and fighters, we must make one assertion right and correct, is that the Eastern Cape health system is just not underdeveloped. The ANC government in the province has long taken a deliberate decision not to develop the health system because it has positioned itself as the enemy of social progress for the marginalized and black people. We send our heartfelt condolences to all families in the Eastern Cape that have lost family members and loved ones due to this invincible enemy. Comrades, the community health centers cannot contribute towards effective and efficient health system when Mshoncho and KSD district are till to date without operational managers. Flagstaff Community Health Centers is challenged with a high vacancy rate which hampers service delivery. Lusiki Siki Village Clinic is falling apart and exposing staff to and patients to unintended harm. As if the previously mentioned is not enough, incompetence and bad governance, the Holy Cross Hospital does not have a stable water supply but it relies on unfenced dam in the community, a dam which is also used by cattle and livestock of the surrounding areas. The Department of Health in the province is facing unbudgeted medical legal claims that are worth in excess of three billion, and they continue to grow as days go by. They face these claims because of their deliberate negligence and disregard of our people. Instead of building infrastructure, maintaining health centers, paying accruals of gratitude, they decide to use 10 million for what is called, or what was called, ambulance scooters in the province with no decent roads. The administration of Oskama Buyane is failing our people. We have more than 3,157 schools with poor sanitation including 1,445 schools without pit latrine toilets and hundreds of schools that do not have textbook. Yet, the department of Mr. Fundile Garde has an audacity to have 200 million of education infrastructure grant forfeited to the national treasury due to failure to spend it. This is the sad state of affairs this is the state, sad state of reality which affirms and urges us comrades that we need to build a strong, dependable EFF that will be centered on expropriation of land without compensation for equal redistribution, nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic shortcuts of the society, an EFF that will build state capacity which will lead to abolishment of tenders an EFF that will deliver free quality education, healthcare houses, and sanitation, an EFF that will uh, protect, massive protect industrial development and create 
sustainable jobs. An EFF that will focus on massive development for the African economy and advocating for a move from reconciliation to justice. An open and accountable government without fear of victimization. This is our general, generational mission. The generation of economic freedom in our lifetime. And as Fran Franz Fanon abruptly puts it, we must either fulfill or betray, or we are not a generation of betrayers. Fighters and comrades, unemployment remains a big problem that is not addressed adequately in our province. Statistics South Africa released a fourth quarter report and our country's unemployment rate is at a skyrocketing high, high 35%, and Eastern Cape is the province with the highest unemployment rate at a staggering high of 45%, followed by Mpumala. The Eastern Cape, there exist 45% of discouraged job seekers. Discouraged job seekers meaning that those who do not even attempt to seek employment and they languish at home, Abantu Bangami. The great revolutionary Chairman, Ma Chairman Mao Zedong of the Chinese Communist Party in his address of the youth in China says, I quote, the young people are the most active and the vital force of society. They are, no, they are the most eager to learn and, and least conservative in their thinking. This is especially so in the area of sociology, close quote. But the youth of South Africa and the youth of Eastern Cape are not treated as the vital forces in the Eastern Cape. We see this in a number of Eastern Cape, young people are un who are unemployed, the youth, the youth unemployment is stag staggering at an all high time of 60%. Comrades, you simply cannot create employment in the Eastern Cape without prioritizing the most two uh, successful industrial zones in South Africa, namely the East London IDZ, as it contributes immensely to exports in the world market. The Eastern Cape, with regards to employment, is dependent on automotive sector, and there's a huge potential in agriculture, manufacturing of chemi and chemicals of petrochemical chems. Our province is the only province with three harbors, namely the port of East London, port of Nguha, and Port Elizabeth. The port of Nguha is the only transshipment hub in South Africa. The economic freedom fighters need to capture and utilize this port of Nguha to maximize level and ensure that it creates sustainable jobs. Furthermore, we must maximize the effect of our three harbors to accelerate and grossly develop our potential to create meaningful jobs for our people. We must never be found wanting or standing as neutral on the question of gender-based violence. The EFF stands vehemently against GBV. That is why we stood against and, sh and the shoulders of Nam Tlam Tua who was allegedly murdered by an allegedly abusive boyfriend. The PCT took a decision and a decisive action mobilized all sectors of the society and stakeholders of the society marched to police stations in Umtata and the courts to say that there is a party that is willing to take to the streets to mobilize for complete overhaul of domestic abuse in our country. We saw the ANC being typical opportunist as they are and they decided to join our struggle afterwards. There is no room for women ab abusers in the EFF. We always stand against all forms of GBV. <laughs> With just only three months into the year 2022, South Africa has recorded nearly 11,000 rape cases in the first three months of the year. Six instant Cape towns have dominated the top 10 list of sexual offenses. Towns like uh, Kumcha, Matlie, Port Alfred, Keskamawuk dominate the top 10 list. Reports indicate that Lusikisiki 
has the highest number of rape cases opened. The leadership of O.R. Tambo ought to take these concerning statistics very seriously. The PCT marched, the PCT, the RCT marched to Malitsoi Police Station in August to deliver a memorandum that rape cases be taken serious and urged because the system that does not do much to protect survivors. Yet again, the government of the ANC has failed our people and it only pays lip service to that. There is approximately 7 million young girls without access to sanitary pads in South Africa. And over 950 of those girls are found in our province. Meanwhile, they own the MEC for Social Development, the former MEC of Social Development, uh, Mani Lusiti, had an audacity to have 20 million forfeited by the National Treasury. This 20, 12 million was allocated for sanitary pads for young girls all over the province. We must be able to build strong economic freedom fighters that will ensure that social security is offered to young girls who, do, who need to protect their dignity. The economic freedom fighters and the provincial command team underwent revolutionary programs of action in pursuit of social progress. These key programs are not necessary in this section, but throughout the political report. In 2019, the province organized marches in KSD municipality in order to protect, to protest against corruption and for service delivery. We did this in 2022, to, did this in 2022 as we marched in, this, in OR Tambo district municipality demanding an end to corrupt and sheer nepotism. This demonstrated a zero tolerance towards corruption. In the remaining through, in remaining through to our cardinal pillars, that same year, we handed over a house to Umama Unomakaziwe in Potsdam in Tanzania as a clear indication of our commitment to provide free houses with adequate sanitation. The Eastern Cape is one of the most impoverished provinces alluded earlier by the deputy president. And as such, we have been able to identify certain schools earlier in the year that we have been assisting with providing school shoes, school t-shirts, stationary, sanitary towels, and supporting a handful of families. The program Back to School campaign, as it was concerned with restoring the dignity of African people. In 2020, our local premier soccer league team, Chip Chipa United, appointed a Mr. certain Mr. Luke Emil as head coach, a descendant, according to us, of King Leopold, who committed genocide to at least 10 million African people in Congo. Luke Emil is a racist, is a racist who referred to fans in Tanzanian club as monkeys. We undertook a decision to ensure that he's dismissed with all our might. We did interviews, meetings, correspondence, and he was eventually dismissed. <laughs> the EFF has a zero tolerance for racists who see black people as nothing but subhumans who are subvient and inferior to white people. It is in the same breath that we have consistently been at the forefront of calling for the removal of racist colonial statues that are still preserved and venerated by the so-called free and democratic government in the Eastern Cape. Decolonization is a central objective of the EFF. We must decolonize the racist, colonial, capitalistic, patriarchal system of oppression. These 1820 British monuments that symbolizes the Anglo-Boer War must be kept at a historical museum because the Anglo-Boer War is not something that we can celebrate. They were merely, a f they were merely fighting for self-given right to conquer and dominate Africans through violently oppressing us. We have been successfully able to introduce a motion in the legislature and a resolution was passed by the same legislature 
to say that the face of the land thieves, colonial conquest, cannot be celebrated in the form of statues and forever remind Africans of those who violated them. We must com commend the Roads Must Fall movement, which reintroduced black decolonization back to the mainstream discourse in our municipality. In Nguma municipality, the EFF undertook march to both the municipality and the High Court, submitted memorandum to demand to the municipality to say it must fairly redo the allocation of title deeds in order to do away with ANC nepotism. It must stop unlawful and anti-humanitarian evictions of residents from government-owned buildings till such time that which they cannot be reallocated adequately, adequate housing. To meaningfully address the issue of drainage system that are blocked throughout the area. This is the demand that we have been consistent throughout the province as these factors affect all parts, not only the uh, moon. Uh, the Secretary will further report in his organizational report about the legislature. We have been consistently advocating against discontinuation of rural incentives for scarce skills in rural areas. This project introduced in order to encourage educators, health practitioners to work in rural areas and to teach and perform skills. What is even of concern is that the AG has identified the Eastern Cape as having a weakness relating to surge and rise of fruitless, irregular, wasteful and unfull expenditures. We must claim and save the Eastern Cape from the vultures of the ANC. Comrades, as per the logo and the design of the EFF, the founding manifesto, we understand that the EFF as a movement which is international in character. We draw our inspiration from the two, July 26 movement of Cuba, which was led by Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. We draw inspiration from the Chinese Communist Party when it applies the Marxist-Leninist approach towards building China. The Chinese Communist Party has been able to apply Marxism with Chinese characteristics and use that as the basis of building a strong economy that is able to challenge United States of America's economy and all other superpowers and to restructure a new world order. Comrades, the EFF should and does have a view on Ukraine conflict, Ukraine-Russia conflict. There are many complex international politics and this is not only for the emerging Southern African countries, but for the rest of the world. The ongoing operations in Russia and Ukraine reaffirms the need to fight the US-led war alliance of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That is, ex that is an expansion and a threat to global peace, security, and stability. Western imperial forces have attempted to undermine the security of Russia by going against their commitment not to expand. This was just a collapse of the Soviet Union. The Russian Federation has faced the, lev the highest level of international condemnation and force. They have cut energy imports, blocked transactions, halted shipment of key imports such as semiconductors and other electronics. At least a thousand foreign companies have op halted operations in Russia, but somehow Russia is able to survive with all these sanctions. It is able to cater and protect for the needs of the Russian society. The question that we must ask ourselves is, is how? Is it simply because they have been able to build and create state capacity with about 529,000 companies partly and wholly owned by the state. We want to congratulate the newly sworn in Prime, uh, Prime Minister of Lesotho, Mr. Sam Matekan, and we are hopeful that we will, he will lead the nation of Lesotho and contribute to the tremendous task that the Commander-in-Chief has been advancing, which is unity of African countries and the creation of a United States of Africa as espoused by 
Muama Gaddafi and Kwame and Kwame Nkrumah, who are certain that for as long as Ghana is free, the rest of the continent is, is still dominated. That freedom is meaningless. Our people in the Eastern Cape and mostly in Matatiel, Alwal not they interact and relate with the people of Lesotho because they live close to their borders. The imaginary and colonial borders must fall because in Matatiel, our people experience livestock theft and once the cattle cross the imaginary borders, the residents of Matatiel cannot do anything and police are bounded by jurisdiction. We love them, we want to coexist co co with them. Comrades, we need a strong, dependable African Union that will promote solidarity, unity in all the 55 African states. The African Union that will coordinate and intensify cooperation, defend our sovereignty, and eradicate all forms of colonialism, xenophobia, and in the same breath, we need a strong and dependable pan-African parliament that will ensure full participation of African peoples in the economy, economic development and integration of the continent. The situation in Congo and its matters, as, and its matters between them and Rwanda are said. We need to intervene and foster cooperation between the two countries because blame shifting will just bring about no progress. Instead, it will perpetuate continuous fighting amongst each other. We call upon Rwanda and the DRC to seize upon this conflict. The founding manifesto of the EFF makes it clear that we will fight to attain revolutionary means of power by any means necessary. But in the immediate moments, we use the electoral poll to attain power. The EFF, as a Leninist movement, prioritizes state power. The EFF in the Eastern Cape in 2014 received 3% of the votes, which translated to 75,776 valid votes. And effectively, it had two seats in the provincial legislature. And in 2016 local government elections specifically, we se secured 5.18% 5 5 support, which meant that we were voted for by 189,000 people. The, EF, the, the EFF secured 76, 73 seats out of the 1,450 seats in the Eastern Cape municipalities. In 2019 national and provincial elections, the EFF in the Eastern Cape secured 7.84%, meaning that we were voted for by 154,821 people who graced themselves to vote for the EFF, and this is translated into five seats and one seat in the National uh, Council of Provinces. The EFF in 2021, local government election, got 7.87, meaning that the, there's 232,000 people who voted for the EFF, and this translates to 114, 123 seats from 1,450. This is an improvement. Comrades, the Eastern Cape has been improving strides to strides in the province in terms of voting and electoral results. But we are still not satisfied because we know we can get more people in the Eastern Cape to vote for the EFF. The people of the Eastern Cape are one of the most suffering people and it is the duty, it is our duty to ensure that we grow significantly, eradicate our people from poverty, let us not be comfortable with merely growing and improvement, but focus on building the EFF and securing more votes and trust for our people. From each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs. The great Karl Marx, when posi positing, this was imagining a society with equality and a shared division of duty. The EFF Labour Desk in the Eastern Cape has made steadfast contribution in bargaining and defending the working class, even more, even more so against the brand of digital and online working.
sheer exploitation was experienced, wherein workers were illegally retrenched and salaries and salaries from COVID-19 relief were withheld in hospitals various and various places. Workers were forced to work whilst they were COVID-19 positive and no proper health and safety measures were taken, yet workers will be forced to be at work. This is where the EFF will decisively attend to issues militantly in a militant manner in defense of the working class. Key and worth noting, the EFF had a labor march on the 25th of November 2022 to East London Distel Alcohol Company to defend workers who had been exploited and mainstreamed at work. Racists cannot stand black people. Racists who cannot stand black people have not felt the presence of the labor desk in the province. This area we still need to do more. Comrades who agree that our system of traditional leadership has been infiltrated by a system of colonialism. As we understand, colonialism is a supra-individual. It cares less whether you are rich or poor, royalty or commoner, but it will affect you and we must be able to exist with certain aspects of a culture in a new meaning and form. This is what Professor Peter Exton stands for. Comrades, in the same breath, breath as British people see and treat the late queen and British monarch, the same must be extended to our local kings because the only difference is that, is that is only that of the skin color and that is in the contents of, of settler colonies. We have been made to undermine our traditional leadership in an attempt to dispossess us of our history, our culture, our land, and all forms of value that black people hold. What we will never allow is to be set up against our traditional leaders. They pose or they possess a fundamental role that ought to be played in the society. They influence municipalities and develop initiation programs and provide resources. They ensure the promotion of heritage, language, custom, and tradition within municipalities. Identification of common needs for our people. The EFF shares a good relationship with the king of our temple, King Buyelakaya Dalingyeb. It breaks our hearts to see a king not undergoing trial through customary law, but to be jailed under the Roman Dutch law system. The king has been very supportive to the EFF, and for that, we are forever grateful. The Amakosa king, kingdom, has been divided on who should be the successor since the passing of King Zolong Kesitao in 2019. King Atlangen of Ulikaya Stau was recognized as the king, but turmoil seems to continue existing. The leadership of Contra Alexa has acknowledged that these divisions also create community divisions. We hope for a steadfast intervention. We welcome the appointment or rather the identification of the Amampondo Kingdom. Moreover, we are delighted to know that King Yolisa Zulia Sokoma is a member of the Student Command and a member of the EFF. Also, Indru Yamahahabe has been able to identify its king, King Jongutolo Sandi. We want to welcome, congratulate, and wish the king well in his duties. As this name dictates, we hope that it will bring peace, stability, unity within the house of the Hahabe kingdom. We also extend our condolences and remember the queen regent, Noloiso Sandile, who passed on in 2020. Comrades, one of the grave mistakes that this, this report cannot do is not to touch on Ulaluk, which is a process of initiation of young boys into manhood. This process is one that is intimate 
and is very close to the people of the Eastern Cape. And among some tribes, the Ngunis and the African people in general, we want to say it clear now that this process is part of our custom, our long held tradition. We should ensure that we preserve it as long as it is possible. But there is an impo important assertion that, that we must make. One must be honest and fair. It is that these young boys are being killed permanently. Permanently ruled, ruined in the mountains. This past winter alone, 11 boys died and 119 were treated in hospitals. In the past summer, 36 in our province and many have been hospitalized. Our children and young boys should not die to be men. Contra Lesa, the House of Traditional Leaders, the Department of Health should be bringing amicable solution to prevent illegal initiation that serve as a threat and sustainability of our tradition and custom. Isiko litaala, isiko alibulali, limoshonga bantu, abalenza gentelenge iyo. Comrades, we have served our time. And the people of the Eastern Cape, it is now in the hands of this elective assembly to elect, it, uh, to elect who it believes must lead and take the Eastern Cape to greater heights. We wish for peace, unity amongst delegates. And I'm, of course, willing and ready to answer some of your questions on our leadership. I want to close by reminding comrades that in February 1957, Chairman Mao once said, I open quote, let a hundred flowers bloom, let a hundred schools of thought contend, close quote. Chairman Mao used this as a signal of what he wanted from the intellectuals of the country for different and competing ideologies to voice out their opinions about the issues of the day. That is our wish for this assembly. I thank you. Amanda! Amanda! But you're not saying Lel, Tua Aulai, Amanda, Amanda. Thank you very much, fighters. Gizobiz Amanda, U Deputy President, Wetu, also Snigas, Aum Kombandel. Amanda, Viva EFF, Viva. No, thank you very much, Commissar Togozo. So you know, fighters, one of the advantages of the Eastern Cape having this Provincial People's Assembly as the seventh in the entire country is that we have learned from the other Provincial People's Assemblies that there are certain things that we must avoid. And one of those things which the War Council reflected on is to keep delegates until very early hours uh, and for the whole day without time to rest. Because there is no way we are going to perform what we said is the important task of this assembly if we have not rested. Majority of you have traveled from the early hours of yesterday and now it is 12 o'clock, it's midnight. So it is fair that let us adjourn today. The good thing is that we have got copies of the political report. We are going to read it, reflect properly. Even those of you who were napping when the chairperson was speaking, you will read in the morning so that tomorrow when we reflect, we reflect properly. So you have got at least six hours of sleep because by 7 o'clock you must get ready. We are going to start at exactly 9 o'clock tomorrow. 
So let us go to sleep. And when we say sleeping, we say sleeping. With eyes closed, not any other activity that is going to be involved with it. Let us go and rest, come so that tomorrow can contribute much more meaningfully in terms of what happens. Thank you very much. Fighters, <laughs> you